Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. And I just used the real intro once again. How many videos has it been? Man! Right, welcome to the channel called Speaker of the Stars. It used to be called Shadow Knight Paladin if you are perhaps watching this video for the first time, or if you've encountered me for the first time. But yes, that's the reason I used the wrong intro. I changed banding two months ago, so I'm still pretty much in that old intro mindset. So call me Veron, short for Veronica. Um, I am the artist behind sh sh Speaker of the Stars <laughs> slash Shadow Knight Paladin. Fine, I'll give it to myself. Um, yeah. So welcome. If this, you know, if you watch my videos before, welcome back. This is the second part to the outfit designing of Kin Urina. If you haven't watched the first part, I would suggest you go over there first. It's linked in the description. Um, I talk more about Kin himself, the character itself, and you know, you wouldn't be lost why this first layer is already there. I did draw that first layer there. So yes, um, this video is pretty much cut up into two parts, well te technically three I guess. Uh, the first part, which I released last Saturday as of recording, um, this is yeah. Uh, I released last Saturday was me drawing the first layer that you see right now on screen. Um, and then this video is more of his coat and his scarf and the little accessories on his body. Uh, I cut it up because there was so much footage, I swear. There was no way I could edit everything on time, and editing it all in one video would either make the video too fast or too long. So I decided to cut it up into two fi almost 15-minute-ish videos, so it's a bit more digestible. So this is the second video. The third video, which I don't think I'll be releasing anytime soon, is me drawing his body, um, the base. If you haven't watched the first video, um, basically it's like a dress up doll. So there's his base body only in his underwear, and then I would draw the layers of clothing over it. So I did the base body as well. Um, I have it edited already, I just need to export it. But I won't be releasing it along with this these videos. I might release it maybe as a bonus video or. Uh, in between videos of too many tra traditional stuff. Because with Serial Talus, uh, the other character designer I did, um, I haven't released his body video either. So I'll probably post that first before doing Kins. We'll see. Um, right. So, Kin Odina. Yes, we're back to this boy. Um, his outfit consists of the base layer, which is what you see, the coat, which is what we're working on, and his scarf. So I think I mentioned it in the first video that Kin was inspired by the Vocaloid Kaito, which is my favorite Vocaloid. And the only influence you'll see of that on Kin is probably blue hair, wearing a coat, and a scarf. That's the only thing you'll pretty much see influence of Kaito of in Kin. Um, hmm. So his coat was designed to be supposedly suited for battle. Uh, it's suited for movement, rather. <coughs> Kin is a lance user, so I imagine he'll be running around a lot or, you know, using his legs a lot and he needs to move around a lot. So I decided to cut his coat into four pieces, basically. Uh, so it was meant so that he could extend his legs because with normal coats um, it would either restrict him near the waist or the hips or it would restrict him at the knees so by cutting it into four pieces basically he can spread it, his legs as much as he wants and the coat won't get in his way and, but I didn't want it to be like a really simple cut and make the coat all blue so I integrated the cut into this the design by having it sort of like cut into his ribs a little bit so that the part at the back is somewhat a grayish blackish color and the blue on top is well blue and they're meant to balance each other nicely so it's not too bright it's not a solid color and it tones 
the yellow of his shirt down. So yes. Um, his arm guards though, if you can call them arm guards, they're pretty much sleeves. Uh, when I made that, I guess I, I was still influenced heavily by Vocaloid, so if you know of Hatsune Miku, Kagamini Rin, and Len, uh, even Megurine and Luka actually, they have the, 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 tar- the, the tar- <laughs> detached arm sleeves. So I guess it influenced Kim's design a little bit. Uh, I guess you could, if you put it in a logical way, uh, since his coat is meant to be somewhat tougher and stiffer, and it's meant to protect him a little bit from stabs and cuffs and slashes and stuff. I guess those can serve as arm protections and can keep him warm. Uh, the reason it's cut like that also is that Kin's original character design, his very very first design, had him exposing his abs, which when you think about it, isn't very practical. Um, man, Kin. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hit his abs, but since I wanted him to retain that playful nature of his outfit and his character, um, exposing his shoulders seemed the way to go. Also, what else? Yeah, the thigh belt buckle thing on his thigh. Originally, it was meant to hold a dagger, but I don't think I'll have him do that anymore. That's too many weapons for him already. I already have a character that deals with a lot of weapons, so it could just be like a place to put a bag or, you know, something that he could tie stuff up with, I guess. But it's there for stuff. Probably a bag. That's probably the most logical thing to do. But I think you've noticed by now his outfit has a lot of belts. I don't know why either. It seemed cool. (laughs) And also... It seemed the best way to hold things in place. Yes. (laughs) So Kin's outfit isn't 100% appropriate for the ear that he belongs into. Um, In fact, most of my designs don't really properly belong in the ear they're supposed to be into. (laughs) Uh, Let's see, how many characters do I actually have that fit? Three or four, I guess? Um, Two of them I released on this channel, mainly Saiyan El Ribbon Quintet. Which is the Fire Mage I released way, way back. It's like he's one of the first videos I released, I think. And then there's there's uh, Serial Neretalus, which I released last year. Uh, he's the bland, blonde land. He's not bland. He's the blonde lancer dude. So they're the only ones that's somewhat appropriate for the fantasy world I set them in. <clears throat> My voice is failing. Ooh, I can do this. Huh. So working on Kin's coat is pretty fun. Um, aside from just me liking coats in general, I do like just the shape of it. Um, if if someone makes that coat, I swear I will wear it. It's nice. Though I would probably wear it with sleeves and not that cut version. But I would wear that coat. It's I like the really sharp, symmetrical design of it. Um, other than that, I do like how it turned out. Uh, I think I'm really getting a better grasp on cloth and shadows and highlights by now, and I'm relying a lot less on line art to do my thing. So yay! Improvement! Woo! I can do this! <laughs> you know, my voice is fading, I'm running about out of ideas to talk about. Um, I'll come back when I have something interesting to say, so just cut to the music. Okay, okay, I'm back, haha. <laughs> uh, the blue thing you saw just now, um, that's what the layer mask I was talking about in the previous video. Basically, um, you can paint something on a layer, and using the layer mask, you can make it this invisible for that particular thing only. So what I did with Kin was I drew the coat almost completely, at least so that there was no, in- no parts that was open. And I, because I figured in my old art style or my old character designing styles, I would draw around things that need to be on top. So, for example, Kin's chin 
or his hair right there. I would I used to draw around that. But the thing is that left a line art which is somewhat visible and it somewhat breaks the immersion of sorts. So I decided to employ your layer masks so that I could just quote unquote erase that part and when I color it, when I fill it in with the bucket the bucket tool, it still fills in without spreading to the canvas because the line is technically there, you just don't see it. So what I did with his coat um, was the same method and I just like layer masked the, the, the black parts at the back so that his legs would come through. So yay, layer masks. Yay to new techniques! Mm. Oh here, so we're working on layer 3. Man, I'm not catching much of a break, am I? Uh, we're working on layer 3, which has his golden hair tie, or golden hair bangle, whatever. Um, we're working on his gloves, and then we'll be working on his scarf. Okay, so we're just finishing up on Ken's scarf and we're just coloring the line art. We'll be near the end of the video. I'll be showing a preview of the character designs for Ken. So it's more of a, it's like a draw it again, or in this case, design it again. And it's actually amusing um, how far the design has come. So we'll be seeing that in a little bit. Okay, I, guess, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more anime stuff, uh, fan art, traditional digital stuff, some outfit designing like this. Um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Deventart. You know, just social media stuff. And I'll see you around.